everyone. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you the process that I used to create this piece from my Animal Habitat art series. Now, this is the fifth piece from my Animal Habitat art series, and these are the marine animals. Now, this is actually, um, as I said, the fifth piece. I've already done four previous pieces. Uh, that is the desert animals, polar animals, wetland animals, and highland animals. So if you'd like to see that, you can head over to my YouTube channel. They all are there. And you can see the process as well as learn some tips um, in there as well. So for those of you who are new to my channel, uh, let me just give you a little background into the series. Um, I started the series a little while ago where I basically uh, did a lot of research to find out about the animals living in different habitats. And once I went through all the um, reading and uh, made a list of all the animals from a specific habitat, uh, for example, the polar habitat, then I've looked for all the polar animals. Once I've done all my research and I've made my list, then I went on to a royalty-free reference photo website where I then found the reference photos that I could use for these um, spreads. So uh, once that was done, I had the reference photos and I could start doing the sketches for the series. So basically, the series is all about um, the different animal habitats. Uh, in total, there are 10 of them. So this is number five. So I'm halfway there. Um, and I just basically wanted to represent as many animals as possible. And I just wanted to include them in groupings of according to their habitats that they live in. So a lot of research went into that, as I said, and it was a long process, but a very fun process because I got to learn so much of new things and so many new things and facts about animals that we share this planet with. And um, it was just very interesting to learn all of this. I've always uh, enjoyed uh, reading up on animals and nature and the environment, um, even going uh, reading up on space and the human body. So I like reading a lot about all these, um, everything that we have on this planet because we're living in a beautiful planet and there's so much to learn and so much to know about uh, on our planet. So that was a long process, but it was something I definitely enjoyed. And then also the looking for the reference photos, that search was a bit of a time consumer. But I basically uh, spent the time and I actually found some really good reference photos, which you will see in the spreads. So when I start a spread, I basically look at the list of the animals, look at my reference photos and sketch the entire spread. Um, for most of these uh, spreads, they were single page spreads, but this one was a double page spread. Uh, this was actually, this took me about eight hours to complete. Um, and uh, it wasn't done in one sitting. I did it over a couple of days. Um, a few hours a day. So I am taking a long time with this because I am, I want them to be, I want the drawings of each animal to be as realistic as possible and has it have as much detail as possible. So um, I wanted them to be small but not so small that I can't include a lot of detail. So you will see that I did as much detail as, as possible in each of these animals. So this was a large spread. This was actually on an A4, or actually I'm doing all the animals in an A4 sketchbook, A4 size sketchbook. So I had a spread now of two A4 pages, which uh, had about 26 animals on the entire spread. So it was a lot of animals to go through. But when taking on something uh, big like this or a big project like this, just start off with one and move to the next as you go along. Don't rush it. Take your time. Um, work on one piece at a time. If you get tired of it, put it aside, do something else, um, and then come back to it when you are refreshed and ready to take it on. Um, like you can see, I'm doing the uh, animals one at a time. Like I said, it was not done in one sitting. I did it over a couple of days. I sat for a few hours every day, but the initial sketches were done um, on one sitting. Obviously, you don't have to do it in one sitting. For the sketches but that's just how i prefer to do it that at least all the animals are down then i can see how they are placed and how they can fit all onto my spread so for this sketch the initial sketch i always start off with a, a water soluble graphite sketch uh, the reason why i'm using the water soluble graphite pencil is because i don't want any harsh graphite lines showing through the uh, lighter areas once I start inking. Now I'm use, I am using the Dermot Intense pencils. Uh, I got a set of 72 pencils and a set of uh, 12 uh, Intense blocks that uh, I only use uh, the blocks when I need to get uh, smoother coverage over larger areas, but for most of it, I'm using the pencils. 
So I'm using those to ink. So I don't want any harsh lines showing through on the lighter areas. So I prefer to use a water soluble graphite pencil because that does dissolve with water and you will not see those harsh lines when you do the final uh, inking. So once I've done uh, the inking according to the reference photo, I look at the details because my sketches don't have a lot of details. It just has the placement of the eyes and the limbs and the in this case the fins and the legs so i just wanted to um and i'm saying legs i mean for the lobster for example um and for the crab and the crayfish you'll usually have for those animals they've got legs so i just want to include the placement of everything so i've got uh, the proportions right of each animal and um that's the initial sketch but the detail i do using the intense pencil as i look at the reference photo and add the color on once I've added all the pigment of the intense pencils onto my uh, drawing for each animal, I then go over with a round brush. Um, I've got a very thin round brush and a little thicker one. You will see the uh, descriptions of all the products I've used in the description below, sorry. So you'll get a list of that. Um, but then I use a round brush just to uh, activate the intense pencils with, the, with water. So once I've done a layer and I've uh, put water over it, I let it dry completely before uh, going over with the next layer. Uh, for highlighted areas or full areas that I need to have uh, white, I'm using a Jelly Roll uh, white pen just to get the um, lightest areas once the drawing is dry or the illustration is dry. If I'm waiting for one animal to dry, I just wait and uh, for that to dry as I'm waiting, I move on to the next animal, work on the initial layers of the, that animal and then go back once the, the previous drawing is dry. Now for this killer whale, I was having a hard time getting, especially when I started adding the water to get everything to blend smoothly or to look smooth. So um, initially I tried with a pencil and I think I actually either didn't have enough uh, pigment on initially. Or it could be that I wasn't blending it and just still showing looking very streaky. So I took the intense blocks and then I used it as if it was paint. So I wet my brush and I basically rubbed it on the block and then I applied that to the um, drawing. And that gave a smoother, a smoother uh, look to it than what it was looking like with just the uh, pencil. As you can see there, I'm going over with it and it's smoothing it out as much better than what it was looking like when I used the pencil. So now I'm working animal by animal. I'm not rushing the process. I'm taking my time. And when you start a big project like this, you need to take your time, work one section at a time. Uh, with this, in this case, I've got multiple animals, so I need to work on each animal uh, separately and concentrate on each animal and get them as realistic as possible. And also with a project like this, where I'm drawing so many animals, I'm actually drawing a lot of animals that I've never drawn before. Or I've never painted before like for example this piranha I've never drawn them before so what I like about doing something like this is that you actually learn a lot about the anatomy of the animals as well which is something you may not have done before or realize the differences between the anatomy of different animals even fish each one has their own body structure if you look at the piranha and you look at the emperor fish that I've got there next door uh, they both these basically look um, similar i mean they both are fish but their structure their bodies are different so they may be fish and similar in that respect but their bodies are structured differently so um yeah you can see there i'm going over with the jelly roll just to get those white specks on the piranha because they've got a shiny skin so shiny scaly skin so you want to include that on there as well as the whale shark as well so yeah, you learn a lot about the um, proportions of the animals and also the uh, body structure of the animals. And also uh, you learn a lot about textures because each other animal has different textures. So you learn how to create those using the medium that you are using. So you, I mean, in this case, I'm using uh, the intense pencils, but this could be done in color pencil. You could do it in ink, in watercolor. You could do it in uh, acrylic as well, paint. Um, even if you just want to do a black and white studies, you can also do that using graphite pencils. So there's no limit that you need to do it with a particular medium. You can do any medium that you're comfortable with. You could try uh, something like this. And it doesn't only have to be animals. 
you can do it with plants you can do it with um, people as well everyone have different facial features so you can do that as well um, you can even do it for different uh, trees or even different objects there's so many different things that you can uh, do something like this for where you've included a variety of different uh, subject matters where you can learn a lot from all of them because I know with this one I've done I mean I've never drawn a seahorse before ever so I got to learn how they are built I got to learn how to create those textures because I look at the reference photo I wanted to look as close as possible to the reference photo which makes me have to think how I'm going to create uh, this texture using the medium that I'm using so by doing a project like this you have to um, you, you know when you're done with a project like this you're going to learn a lot not only about animals and about the anatomy and all of that but with your skills for your drawing your initial drawing skills are going to be um, you know you're going to improve a lot because you're going to be drawing so many uh, animals such a variety of different subject matters that you're going to be uh, learning to see things differently as an artist see different um, shapes see different uh, structures create those structures create those textures uh, how to, basically you'll be improving on using the medium that you've chosen so you'll be improving on how you use the medium to create the different textures how do you use the medium to create um, those uh, basically uh, if in this case with this fish how am I going to create the uh, texture uh, the colors with the blue and the yellow without turning green um, all things like that those are stuff that you are going to learn about your art and about your drawing and improve your skills as you do a lot of different subject matters so whether you're doing a single piece or multiple different subjects in one piece try to vary your drawings even if it's just in a sketchbook take a sketchbook and just start sketching and try to do uh, different uh, animals or different subject matter just to get your brain to be able to see things differently so you actually see the animal as it is or whatever the subject matter is you'll be able to see what that looks like and be able to interpret it on your drawing or your painting or your sketch so i highly recommend trying something like this out because it has improved my skills a lot it's made me um, be able to see things um, much easier than what i used to i mean when i initially started this uh, challenge i can see that there was a massive improvement from my um, ability to draw and also my speed has increased a lot from the first one till the uh, last uh, till the fifth one now that I'm working on because I've gotten a chance to experiment with different um, animals different textures and I've got to uh, practice all of those skills and improve my skills with learning all different ways to see the reference photo and interpret it because in this case I wanted to them to all the animals to be as realistic as possible as I said and I had to pay close attention to the reference photo, pay close attention to the highlights, pay close attention to the shadow areas just so that I can improve on my drawing and get my drawing to look um, as realistic as possible and as close to the reference as possible. When it comes to proportions, when it comes to that's your initial sketch stage and when it comes to applying the color, get the color as realistic as possible or as close as possible to the reference photo, which is something that I really uh, think is very important um, so definitely a um, trying out a project like this or just trying to draw different um, subject matter is definitely something I would highly recommend you doing even if it's just drawing random objects from your home that definitely will help you to improve a lot with your art skills and your drawing skills as well because you will be able to get your proportions right and you'll be able to get your uh, basically um, Practice what you see and how you interpret it in your drawings. So now I'm just finishing up with the second page. I've actually just included two starfish on the spread because that area was a bit empty so I wanted to just include a small um, or second uh, starfish just to fill up that area. So I guess that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. 
If you have, don't forget to like and share. Feel free to leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe. Till the next one. Bye.